Welcome in, you cheap beggars, to Discount, the bargain bin gaming podcast hosted by three hosts so small you'd think we were the tip at the end of an overly expensive Valentine's dinner. Nicely done it. It's themed. <laughs> I am your host, and I pity the fool who has an uh, argument with my son, because I'm party. Josh, I'm your host, and sitting next to me, plugging into player two. <laughs> Just burning blisters in my hand, spinning the stick, and then contacting Nintendo for my complimentary glove. I'm Darren, and uh, terrorising the neighbourhood with her chainsaw Resident Evil 4 controller. <laughs> I've invited five families over for a party, my kitchen is on fire, I'm ignoring my bladder points, and my diamond is orange, it's Karis. Brilliant, I'm glad you added the diamond in there, because I was thinking that's just a regular day in the office. <laughs> <laughs> I also don't think that's a diamond, I think you've been missold. What is it? I don't know. It's, it's an emerald. That's what oh, I, oh, I see, I was, oh, yeah, yeah. I, okay. <laughs> Because it's green. It's, it's, well, it's orange. Actually, it's just an orange. If you're ignoring your bladder points, it's, it goes red pretty quick, actually. So it's a ruby. Maybe. Anyway, we're here. We're back <laughs> for another episode of our fighty episodes where we're fighting over fighting and fighting and fighting. It's fighting, but it's not fight because we've done that previously. <laughs> um, yes, we're back uh, for another one. And we're all very excited for this week. Um, I'm a little disappointed by my intro and I'm not very sure how I'm going to draw that in a tasteful manner. So <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> please, please do let me know how I that goes. I really went for the Sims because I thought, well, that'll be a nice, easy one for you because it's just a diamond, yeah. you know? I then chose B.A. Baragas's father. <laughs> <laughs> but, so I was just like, how do I artistically black up? Yes. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> the answer is, I don't think you, you don't. can. So oh, I no. think it's going to be I, gold I chains. You just replace yourself with stuff, like a bar that says redacted. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> I was going to say, like, a little cutout of where it would be, but then you sort of black that out, and then I have sort of done it in a yeah. tasteful way, but I probably shouldn't do that. Anyway, let's <laughs> let's cut all of this, because that is highly, highly inappropriate. Oh my God. But it's great to see you all, guys, and hopefully we are actually recording this time. There was um, issues with the last recording, so you might be able to see us on YouTube. Yeah. Um, but thank you for coming along, and let's start off, as we mean to go on, by looking into the past, ready for the future, and jumping into the vault. Can we have some help, please? Hey, I have a question. I think um, that's longer than our normal intro. Because we're music. jumping into the vault, does that mean that we are taking a running start or is the door on the roof? It, uh, <laughs> no, no it's, it's on the floor. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, it's like jump down. Jump down, yeah. just jump down. And we oh, come out me. like. Yeah, it's a, it's a basement. Like, yeah, we're like Mario. We come out of a pipe at the end. Like, whoa! Yeah. My dude, I'm nearly 32. <laughs> my knees can't do down. And then, and then in time. <laughs> my knees all, can't do down. <laughs> they can't do down. We make sure the games put the lotion on their skin. <laughs> or else it gets the holes again. Yes. Um, and but it yeah. damages the discs. It's a real shame. We're looking down at these sad, sad little um, games that have been left in this dark pit cellar yeah. that have they occasionally get to come out on our Twitch stream. Mm. Um, but we are throwing another game down there. Um, a game that I have forgotten to bring with me. Oh, if we're throwing it, that's probably what damages the discs. That's the probably watch. what it is. Yeah. Um, but we're looking back at Non-Human Protagonists, which was our last yeah. episode, which had Sonic Generations, it had Pokemon Mystery Dungeon DX, and it had Medieval mm -hmm. as our non-human protagonists, which yep. were different varying levels of non-human and got some people very angry last time, but will not delve into that. We won't talk about the member of the podcast that um, completely stirred the pot, though. I know, how dare you, Karis? <laughs> I was just trying to get the lotion ready. That was all. Yeah. Stirring it. Homemade lotion. <laughs> homemade lotion. I think that's the most worrying thing you've said in a while. Homemade lotion. Yeah, it's like Fight Club, but more yeah. like for lush. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But yes, we looked at those three. We put it out to the vote. And by a put out to vote... I did on my own socials and everyone else forgot. You just kept yes. us out of it. I'm so sorry. But on the plus I'm side, not. I now know who, what people think is the best game of those games. Okay. Um, one of those games got a staggering zero votes. Cool. Um, and I won't say what it is, but we'll all know what it is. Um, what do you reckon, What in your mind, what deserves to go in the vault of those three games? Would you actually say? I would say Mystery Dungeon. You think deserves to go in the vault? So would I, I just because I think there's a lot of love for it. You're both wrong. The one that won was Medieval. Oh, so Medieval is joining 
I love medieval. All right. The one, the one game that got zero votes in our last episode is the one that everyone thinks is actually the best game. No way. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's played it. Is the problem? Oh yeah. Okay. Everyone's played right. it. They've all got some nostalgia with it, so it's it's going to sway the votes. But we take it on the chin. We we mm. believe you. We yep. understand that you think you know what's right, and we appreciate <laughs> appreciate that. What we're doing here is we're putting it in the vault. By which we treat it as prison for being the most human of the non-humans. Yes, it was being the locked most. away for life. I fair enough. Okay, it, it was the most. I human won't. Dis- I won't dispute it. I, it. I've come to my senses. It was a human with a peeled face. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's how probably not how you should describe it, but that's how I've just making my own lotion, peeling faces. It's yeah, not you a good are start not. You are going to not weird vibe today. Like, yeah. And on top of do it, I what? need to sleep in a different apartment? <laughs> it puts the lotion on its skin. You then peel the face off, peel off the skin, put it in the lotion. It's like then put it back oh, on, yes, and nice. then it's like Joker in ba- uh, the new Fifty Two series. Hmm. Yes, um, like but it. we've put it in there. We've thrown it down there. Stay in your hole, medieval. You deserve to be down there. And should we close the vault? Yeah. yeah. Pocket gravel today or not? No, no, no pocket gravel. We'll just have to get out the pipe instead um, as we move from the vault into the genre. Bandicoot jumping out the pipe. Sometimes he does that when he jumps out of things. Does he come out of pipes? Sometimes. Does he? Depends on the level. <laughs> okay, I can't argue with that. It probably does depend on the level. It does. Um, so yes, we'll get into the actual crux and the main part and the body and the soul. Let's just crack open those ribs. <laughs> I don't know. It's what the duck. fuck is happening? With you? you are a violent... You're in a violent yeah, place. I'm, I am. But we'll move into this week's genre, yeah. which is... Keris, what is the genre? What are we doing? What is the episode? Uh, <laughs> I forgot for a minute. Pa- but believe it or not, it's party. It's party. Thank you, Keris. <laughs> I, got, I got really distracted by the um, rooms. <laughs> yes, you got... <laughs> That does sound like you. Uh, ribs, you just got distracted. It's like me at barbecue place. Yes. <laughs> Finger licking good. Yep. Um, but we'll move across to Darren. Hi. Who, who can tell us what party is. What is party? Uh, it's a party. It's like <laughs> a gathering or something. I don't know. It's something Darren's never been invited no, to. No, I'm not familiar with parties, honestly. Um, so, yes, party. Party games. You know, games for multiple people to play in a fun um, yeah. environment. Gathering, you know, yeah, where you get. Said. You get friends together, you play on multiple controllers, you all compete to be the best, and that's what a party game is. That's what it? a party game is, yes. Is that what any of us managed to do? No. no. No, we didn't. We all took the word party and went, I bet that we can find games with parties in there. Yeah. And I don't think that's what we were meant to do, but alas they, and alas. They all technically involve multiple people. Yeah. <laughs> really? Either playing or in them. In in the in the smallest term for the game I played, I think. Yep. This- there's, there's people a in party it. there. There is a party. I'm just saying, like, lots there's of people. people. Yeah, there's not a lot of people. <laughs> there's, yeah. there's people in it. There are It's people. like a small gathering. But yeah, that, wh- when you think... Get of... together. Yeah, like a catch-up. Can we just restart and, like, retitle this get-together? <laughs> <laughs> no, because I think only one of them is right for that. Okay. Yes. Um, is it? I don't know. Anyway, yes. we all selected games for each other. Um, yeah. And games that maybe not fitting with what we thought it was going to be, but games that we felt would be fun to play mm. regardless of what it is. Um, what we'll do, as we normally do here, is we will go around and divulge what game we've received mm. in the order that we received those games. Yes. Um, and I believe the first person to receive their game was Darren. Yeah. I believe that is correct. Who received a yes. lovely little game from me. A lovely little game. A, uh, a classic, many would say. Mm. Um I received the lovely Heavy Rain. Mm. Party game. Party game. Party game. Yes. It, <laughs> but outside of the obvious party game elements yeah. that is Heavy Rain, <laughs> um, what is Heavy Rain? Uh, it's when there's a lot of rain. Cool. Yeah, I, I thought is... we were doing the topic again. No, sorry. no we're not doing the topic anymore. Um, no. Okay. <laughs> uh, Heavy Rain is a game starring four people. You okay. play as four characters throughout the game. Well, technically five, but four main ones, mm-hmm. uh, all of whom have various connections to crimes involving the origami killer, who is a man who kills people and leaves origami. Yep. It's pretty self-explanatory. Like a piñata. Like a piñata, but with death. <laughs> yes. Um, you, Your four characters are Ethan, yep. who is a lovely suburban dad. Uh, yeah. Norman. 
who is an FBI agent, uh, Scott, who is a detective, and Madison, who has just a terrible time of things. But she is a yeah. journalist. Yeah. She pretends to be a photographer. Mm. We won't worry about that. No. Because that tricked even me. Did it? Yeah. <laughs> I got really confused because I'm like, no, I'm sure I... I'm sure you're sat else. And then the reveal came and I was like, oh, I, I was right. You were right, yeah. <laughs> and um, basically the crux of the story is that uh, Ethan's son, Sean, gets kidnapped by the origami killer and everyone is sort of connected to this case. Yep. So you have uh, Ethan is obviously looking for his son. Uh, Norman's working with the FBI to try and find out who the killer is. Madison is a journalist who wants to cover Ethan's story and sort of embeds herself within his life. And then uh, Scott, Scott Shelby, P.I., has been hired by the victims of the families. Um, the victims of the families? The families of the victims. Yes. He's been hired by ghosts. <laughs> yeah. uh, by the families of the victims to try and work out what's going on. Yeah. And this feels like a precursor to games. Obviously, other games they've made. Uh, I believe this is the first big game from Quantic Dream. Yeah. Who then went on to make Beyond Two Souls and Detroit. Become Human, yeah. Yeah. And it feels like another precursor as well to games. Uh, the... Super massive games like Until Dawn, and yeah, that. very yeah. much the same so. sort of vibe. It's like a choose your own adventure esque thing mm. where you go through a scenario, it's a lot of quick time events, it's a lot of dialogue choices, strange controls, very strange controls. Yeah. Why does a game in 2011 have fixed camera and tank controls? It's not, <laughs> Resident, Evil. It's not Resident Evil 1. What are we doing? <laughs> um, but yeah, it's very story driven, it's very you hop between people at sort of different times in the story and see different perspectives on things um they cross over in some ways there's only one crossover that i found really interesting and i kind of wish there was more of it yeah. in that way so you have a lot of like two of the stories intersect because i said ethan and madison spend a lot of time together um norman uh, eventually sort of comes into terms with ethan because he obviously goes to the police looking for his son and there's a really fun one later on where you and uh Two chapters back to back. I can't think of the word I was actually looking for there. I can't um, think of what you're looking for either. Sorry. No, two uh, chapters back to back. I understand what you mean. Back, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, consecutive is the word I was looking for. Cool. There we consecutive are. Consecutive chapters. You go into a club as Madison and have a conversation with a guy. Yep. You then go in as Norman. Yep. And you find DNA traces that Madison has been there. Right. And you're yeah. like, that's cool. Mm. This all the story comes together. I'll get more into the actual like, gameplay and elements of the story and various mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. But. Um, yeah, it's a really interesting story. Really cool to be in it. It's kind of cool how it develops in certain ways. Uh, it has its problems, yeah. but we will get to those as yeah. well shortly. Yeah. Understandably. Um, it, and that's the thing. It's, it's a 2011 game. It's the first of its thing it's going to have. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Jittery bits. Um, where does, where's, who's Jason in it? Is Jason his son? Jason. Jason is his son. Yeah. You said Sean, I think. When they're, we they're two of them. Oh, yes. Mm. They are. I have, yeah. I have not played this game in about five years. So Sean has two sons, not Sean. Ethan. Ethan. <laughs> Ethan has there's a lot of lot of names. Uh, Ethan has two sons. One of these sort of opening elements in the game is you go to the mall with your sons and, you and uh, Jason, yeah. Jason gets hit by a car. Yeah. Poor Jason. Yeah, uh, poor Jason. 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 Uh, also there's a pie. <laughs> there is also a party. A but we'll discuss that in most accurate. Yep. <laughs> that's gonna be it's it. a pie. <laughs> what what a shit show that's gonna be today. Yep. Um the next person to receive their game was it my Keris. was myself. <laughs> it was not me. Um, and it was from Keris. And it was not surprising. The first opportunity she's had to bring this game in. Yeah. I got Resi 7. Nice. It does mean that she can no longer buy this for any other genre. No. Any other thing. Which is probably a blessing in disguise. Because yeah. it might be more accurate in other genres that show up. I hope the one we pulled today is something like survival horror again. And you're like, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> when we eventually add... Uh, Slightly offensive to hillbillies. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. It's gone. Hillbilly killers. Oh, oh no. What a shame. <laughs> or hill killies, as they should be called. <laughs> um, Concerning women in wheelchairs. Damn. Yes. yes. But yes, Resident Evil uh, 7 Biohazard. Yeah. Um, it's the new reimagining of Resident Evil following on from the terrible mistakes that are six. Yeah. Um, it's, the fir- it's a first person survival horror Um where you play as another guy called Ethan, but Ethan Winters this time, him chasing after his long missing wife, going to a derelict plantation and finding an infected family and him dealing with the atrocities of these four slash five people, Mm. really, there that he has to make his way through. Um, And 
come to terms with who he is and trying to get his wife Mia back. Um, it's first person horror survival at potentially one of its finest. It's very well put together. This is obviously the PS4 version. The PS5 version that have they have now released for free upgrade is a better one to play with right mm. now. Um, the graphics are a lot nicer. The hair isn't as weird as is typical Capcom style yeah. styling hair. hair. Yeah. yeah, they've done a lot more. But yeah, it's clearly sort of very inspired by like the Evil Dead and things like that. And it's got a bunch of uh, DLCs in there. But it's a game that has been out and I think is widely discussed by people since its release. Um, so most people will know all the bits there. But yeah, it's standard umbrella are involved in the loosest possible way for mm-hmm. the first time um, and it took a lot of people by surprise because it shied away from its standard the, the foray it had moved into because the first one were very much was survival horror resource yeah. management mm-hmm. two very much similar then it starts getting a bit more bombastic and this then goes let's pull it strip it right back but they made it first person which a lot of people didn't quite like mm. um but yeah that's pretty much it you just work your way through um a different sort of series areas of this plantation dealing with the different members of the family slowly uncovering the truth of what's going on there before you try to escape or is it even possible um it does have multiple endings as well um it i mean can- in the loosest term, it's got two endings, really. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> in the loosest possible term, it's got two and different endings. There's a party in it. <laughs> and it does have a party in it. Um, and a lot of guns and a lot of things. And yeah, it's it's good. And it's like one of their most successful um, ones, which is now and obviously made Resident Evil 8 Village, which has also received rave reviews. And I think a lot of people prefer that to 7. And a lot of people prefer 7 to 8. Mm. And it's a very divisive, divisive topic. Mm. But yeah, that's it. Biohazard. Evil with like lots of eyes in it. Yeah. Um, but that's that's what I received. Thank you, Mermaid Man. Not a problem. Evil. Um, but the last person to receive their game. Who would have guessed? Who would have been shocked that it's a game coming from Darren that would be the last one? I could, before I start, I'd like to take you into my mindset when I received this game. Okay. okay? So bear in mind, obviously, I bought Josh's game. I live with Josh. So when. Uh, Josh was buying Darren's game. I was aware of what was being bought. Yep. I was aware that the party games that we were doing were quite loose, yep. um, very dark, yep. really in content. Heavy Rain, yep. I've been watched play before. I knew it was dark. <laughs> Resi 7 is my favourite game. I know how dark it is. And I was thinking, shit, this is going to be a really dark yeah. episode because like, if Darren's goes down any kind of same path, yep. this is going to be a dark, dark game. I feel like I nailed the brief, yeah. I received this game. (laughs) (laughs) I opened the package and Josh was sat on the sofa behind me. I already knew what it was. And I just went, (laughs) oh my good God. And Josh went, it's a PS3 game. And I said, yes. And he says, what is it? And I'd like to show you. (laughs) Without the disc, because it's still in the PS3. Without the disc, because it's still in the PS. I got Lord of the Rings Lego game. Yay. (laughs) different in feel yeah I, yeah, I think so to- yeah tonally different and I'll be yeah. honest with you given actually the conversation we've just had I actually feel like the tonal shift was needed for yes, a part probably. of the episode. to be fair it is similar to Heavy Rain there's also a lot of names in that yes yeah but no one called Ethan no one called I think Ethan. you'll find we follow the story of Frodo Ethan Baggins yep. yes so- <laughs> alright I take it back yes it's lots to do with it <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay. So, um, what happens in Lego? <laughs> well, it's pretty standard. It's a Lego game. It's. it's <laughs> it of of Lord of the Rings. I'm not going to go through the whole plot. Uh, people, people know the plot of Lord of the Rings. This essentially follows all three of the films in standard, humorous, not taking itself seriously, spoofed kind of versions of the three books and movies. Um, the movies, not the books, really. Um, and it's just good fun. You can um, you can play this co- uh, couch co-op as well. There's always an option to get a second yeah. controller in. Um, if not, you just kind of are able to switch between the characters that are available to you for that moment. So, um, you know, it starts with the big battle. You can kind of go between Isildur and um, oh, the, the elf guy, Liv Tyler's dad. Forget what his name uh- is. Uh, Elrond. Elrond, Elrond, that's, that's it. it. Elrond. And um <laughs> Oh, Steve Tyler. Yes. Steve Tyler, yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> and you can go back and forth between those two because they both have different kinds how, of abilities. How do they get to each other? Do they just walk this way? Good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yes. <laughs> and then when you are in that's the it, that's in, the, in Hobbiton, 
you've got the option to kind of switch between Frodo, Sam, Merry, and Pippin. Mm-hmm. Um, and they all have different abilities. So it's it, you just switch between them as you go along. And it is. It's good fun. It's the, great. The real question is, is it as good as the Lord of the Rings games? Two Towers. Oh, it probably depends on the Lord of the Rings games. Yeah, it does. Two Towers. Good. Some of them are already bad. Oh, I mean, you know, the original, like, Look, two towers yeah. and the two uh, towers game is the standout from the three I found. But well, Return of the King's basically the same, and Fellowship of the Ring is weird in comparison. Yeah. Anybody play Third Age? Uh, no, I that game's not. a lot of fun. Cool, mm. but yes, so it's Lego Lord of the Rings. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and That's, is there a party is. in it? There is a party in a different sense. Yeah, it's not a party as in a physical party that you see in the two games you have. It's a party of people. Ooh, that's Ooh. that is a different way, and it's a big old party Do too. Do you get to celebrate um, Bilbo Baggins' eleventy first birthday at the beginning? No, that's a shame. That's a shame because otherwise you would have had an actual party in there. Yeah, day. no, no, no <laughs> unfortunately, not to start well. it already. But yeah, these are our three games. We oh. have Lego Lord of the Rings, Resident Evil Seven. And um, Heavy Rain. <laughs> and, if, and if we'd gone, hey guys, work out what our genre is from this, I don't think you'd have got it. Um, outside of that, were there any games you were thinking of getting but didn't go for? Uh, Mario anymore? Party. Pun? Mario Party. Mario Party. Right I think... off the bat, I went Mario Party. It's uh, expensive, it's hard to get. Yep. I immediately shelved that idea. Mm-hmm. I then looked at uh, like Final Fantasy in the same interpretation of party. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah I like that. Uh, I also looked at Pokemon in the mm. same, same interpretation of party. <laughs> you thought I'm buying for Keras, let's buy another Pokemon game. <laughs> yeah, but Keras is already a bit oversaturated on Pokemon and I wasn't going to throw Keras into another fucking Final Fantasy, especially because yeah. it would be the older ones. Yeah, which are... that would be brutal. Tough. Um, but yeah, that was, that was about the extent of it. Yeah, I, I definitely had a thought about like WarioWare with it yeah. um, and a lot of the good ones not the good ones but the ones that you probably associate most with it like I suppose a Jackbox or something like that are that a very is, digital yeah. based and which... I, I'll be honest with you I had trouble with because the first thing that came to mind for me was Resident Evil 7 because I knew the party was in it and I wanted to fit it in there some way um, however as you say Jackbox like I found this one really hard to research because whenever you type in games with party it just comes up with party games and all i was getting was jackbox and yeah overcooked moving out which are all great games and probably more what i bet you expect but i suppose we've all gone a little off kilter which might make it more fun like the problem as well is a party game sort of in concept requires multiple people it does yeah yeah. so it's hard to sort of buy it on the one-off when a lot of it depends on also having the people there with you yeah because i also look something like buzz yeah yeah that's a classic party game but it's a quiz game which you need multiple people for yeah. that's it. it's more about the experience of playing it rather than the game I think yeah. if we'd actually bought a bunch of party games we'd have arranged a day for us to all meet up along play with this and then we'd mm. all have played it but you know it doesn't matter we've nope. got these and we've all got um, different ideas party we've standouts we want party standouts I mean oh yes anyway should we go and argue about them yeah let's, let's go do fight it. about them Wait. round one I never know did, when round one is coming, did that spook but you? I know no. when fight is after what, round one. What I thought was, for some reason, right, this is so random, I'm so sorry. The thing went off, and the bloop at the beginning, my brain did not process that as the opening. For some reason, in my head, for a second, it sounded like Spanish, like Mexican guitars. Like bloop, 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 and I was like, he's put the wrong intro on, oh my yep, god. We're about to listen to <laughs> Dorado on Overwatch. Hell yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know why that happened. That was insane. But, <laughs> so yes, if you haven't been here before, um, what we do now is we now argue over four different categories to try and assign the most points and try and win the episode with for ourselves. First three rounds go to points to the person who purchased the game and the last point, which is, you know, player of the game, goes to the person who experienced it. So, first qua- quattagory. First <laughs> quattagory. We're ducks now. Yes. <laughs> Party ducks. <laughs> you know, those standard things. First category is most quackurate. Um, so, who uh, had sorry, the there's most... no ducks in Heavy Rain. Oh, damn. I don't... There are no ducks in this either. Uh, no. They don't think they have ducks in Lego. They have chickens. Yeah. yeah. But, anyway. anyway <laughs> most accurate party game. Mm. Um, well, two of them have parties in it. Yeah. Do they, though? Not, yeah, not yeah, good they parties. Do. <laughs> Does it not have a party? They no. set up a birthday party. It happens off screen. 
Yeah, all right. You nah. set up the party. She says, oh, his friends are coming at two. And then you immediately skip forward in time to a different day. So do I, would I argue that that is probably more accurate for how we've all done this episode, where we've set up the party, then not <laughs> <had> a party. <laughs> <laughs> It's accurate to the episode. I would say it's accurate to party. No, I agree. I suppose that's fair. I, I haven't played it in a while. And the second I thought of party, I was like, I remember there being a party. Or at least set, I do remember I, setting up the party. I, like, I played a little bit of this before. And I remembered the party. Yeah. And it was like a weird sort of like Mandela effect thing. Where I immediately skipped forward to them at the mall. I went, mm. where, where is the party? Not do the party? Yeah. What? Well, what a horrible realisation for me for absolutely misfiring well, then. Genuinely, I was like, oh, they're setting up. They're, like, they're going to come around. You like play as part of the party. And then yeah. you sort of, oh, like going to the mall was part of the party. I oh, always it's not. It's a completely separate day. Yeah, I always thought it was that you set up the party and you start the party. You don't do the whole party, but you start the thing like invite, like bringing the kid, like something for it. And that, that was what I thought it ended no, up. You but... sit down to eat dinner before the party starts. And also, then you're at the mall. Who's having dinner before a party? I know. They had a really nice dinner as well. I bet mm. they did. How, how, did you have to help prepare it? Uh, no. No. <laughs> no. No, because it's... Uh, because of the various treatment of the female characters in this. Uh, she did the it entire, all. From the second she gets home, she is in the kitchen washing up and preparing dinner. <laughs> while you go and play outside with the kids. Not, oh, even, yeah. not even well. You wander around looking to play for your kids, trying yeah. to find things. Yes, yeah. Mm. Do you do like a sword fight? You do a sword fight. Yeah, I remember And that. I think it implies that you should let them win. No. No. <laughs> Beat the shit out of that kid. Beat the shit out of him just before he dies. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, but there is a party in this game. Yes. This was my justification for buying it. Yeah. I mean, Resi 7 does have a party in it. Um, again, not a very good party. It's a birthday party. It's where, not really your where, birthday. Where you're the only one there for your birthday. And it is essentially saw trap after saw trap. Sounds like and, my birthday. And parties. the only part that is that is really a birthday is there is a cake that ex- explodes. And they sing happy birthday to you. In a rather disturbing manner. Yes, they do. So there is a party and that is with um, the brother Lucas um, section, which is the shortest section of the whole game. And you go in there, but you do get to play that party twice one through a VHS and one on your own because you do the VHS and you learn how to get through it much quicker, mm-hmm. which I think is a really cool mechanic in that game for that yeah. one. Oh, I forgot about that bit. But yeah. that's, it's a nice and little... he does actually call it a celebration, by the way. Yeah, so... I'm, not, I'm not denying that, but I'm saying, yeah, he does. there is that birthday party there and mm-hmm. there are some balloons that are all grey. And, and technically, you have that wonderful dinner party at the beginning. That's when what I thought you bought it for. No, yeah, you've got that dinner party. party. <laughs> There's two parties because you've got a lovely dinner party at the beginning where they're trying to serve you actual humans. No, that's uh, lovely. <laughs> that is not a dinner party. Um, it's a dinner. She she says herself, Josh. She prepared that meal especially for you, and he won't fucking eat it. Yeah, you that's can't trust anything. He's a son says. of a bitch. Yeah, can't trust Marguerite. Marguerite, terrifying woman. Terrible, <laughs> horrible, worst thing in this game. Um, but. It's not. It's not really a dinner party. A dinner party isn't inviting one person round to a family. That's not a dinner party. A dinner party requires multiple people. There are multiple people there. The whole family, grandma's there. Yeah, but they all live in the house. It's not. It's not a dinner party. What I'm trying to say is there is a birthday party that's a fake birthday party that is just for you. So there is an element of a party in this game. Yeah, Um, and that is about all I would say is party in this. Yeah, you only get any like cool like makeshift party weapons. Like you don't have like a flare, which is a candle Mm. afterwards, which is what I thought would be fun. But they. I will say as well, and I know this won't count because this isn't. You'd have to buy it separately, but I'd actually, it might be a free one, but there's a DLC for Razzie 7 called Jack's 50th Birthday, um, where you actually, he's wearing a little party hat and he's infected and you have to go around and collect all these things to feed him before he gets angry and kills you. Sounds like you should have so. bought that. Should have bought that then, really? Yeah. But they come, it's, it's, it doesn't come uh, with it. But I don't care if it, this is what I'm saying, I know it doesn't come with it, okay? <laughs> There we are. No, and I agree that there is definitely a birth- At least the birthday party happens on screen, although technically you ruin the birthday party. Yeah, absolutely. We shit on the <laughs> really, So really. you don't really have it. So we've got a birthday party that didn't happen. Yeah. A birthday party that you ruin and, and it's a just dinner you. Party. And then Lego. Now, I am going to defend this game a little bit, okay? Because I but will one say... One of us has to defend our game. <laughs> I will say with this one... I'm an English teacher, right? And when you say party in this sense, all it is is a different interpretation of the yeah, word. It not, definitely I'm... means a party of people. Yep. And I could also argue as well that I get that it's not a party game, but the fact that there is a couch co-op thing involved okay. means that you could play this as a social thing yeah. if that is what you wanted to do. Um, 
that you can't you can't deny that there's a party element in there. It's just a different element of oh, party than intended. you're not having to defend yourself too hard because I genuinely think that is the most accurate yeah, party same. game. Yeah. That's why I said, like, I wish I had one of us has to fight for our game, because I threw mine under the bus immediately, and you sort of didn't commit to yours much. It's because I, I think it's the loosest thing. I think because Lego... Lego, um, Lego, Lego. Lego, Lego, has the couch co-op you can play with multiple people, having an element of that sort of party-style mm. game. Plus there is the other interpretation of the word party, where you do have a party of people who are going off... And it is Lego, and it is Lord of the Rings. It's fun. Yeah. You know, Everything the about weird it thing feels, is that, like, feels party. Unless I'm looking to like see someone's reactions to playing it, I'm not going to get Resi 7 out in a party. I'm not going to get Heavy Rain out in a party. Oh, you should. Do I want to go, hey guys, I've got Lego, Lego Lord of the Rings, and it's funny as fuck. Um, I, we could kind of couch co-op it together. It's, it's more of an option. I genuinely think before we were together, we went to a friend's house down in Somerset or something like that. It's, Aiden! And I think they actually, they, yeah. got, they actually got this game out. Yes! <laughs> oh my god, no, we have actually played this. I don't know. Like, what the hell? Oh my god, that's so, a memory that somehow, I Somehow, got. Darren I wasn't there and that, um, I do think that for a party, you should bust out Heavy Rain, and then whoever has to play as Norman can know they're your least favourite friend. Although I would argue, technically, you can do the same thing with this. You switch between characters to play a journey. It's the same way that you do... You until, that, dawn, yeah. until dawn it's the but same way also, but I wouldn't say I, I'd argue it more if it was like um, you said Man of Adan has that or the quarry has that as a yeah. feature yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, if that was a feature it'd be cool oh I'm not fighting for it no, for no. that reason but I'm just saying it has the ability yeah. to play yeah. this you're not going oh switch between boss areas no <laughs> Although, I will say there I is... would hand off for Marguerite because I hate yeah. it yeah I will say there switch is something die. really fun about like I did it over Christmas um, where I said my dad is Sorry, Dad, but he's the biggest wuss going. He gets scared by everything in a game. You're saying and that when your your mum fast forwards through The Walking Dead because it gets my too scary. mother doesn't count. She's such it's a big wuss. We don't need to talk about how she's big. She worse. watches the beginning and the end of the episode and goes, "Well, I know what happened." Cool. <laughs> Genuinely, um, which is why when we started watching The Walking Dead together, he was like, "Are we all going to remember all of this?" I was like, "No, I won't. <laughs> I don't remember anything." That's, that's how my partner watches on. TV, but not because she's scared. She's a fucking menace. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in any case, Resi 7, um, I, I played Wait. it when I lived with my parents for a Married bit. Married to Karis' mum? What? 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 Oh. Are you fucking my mum? No. no. <laughs> You're fucking my mum, Santa Claus? <laughs> But no, yeah. I, I put it on for my dad to play over Christmas when he'd had a couple of whiskeys and watching his reaction to playing this was party enough in my head. I'll be honest, it was hilarious. But I do think that was more for you to enjoy with your dad. Yeah. It, as, it's not a as, party as another person watching it who'd already played it, I didn't get the same sort of yeah. enjoyment. I think it's very much the only one here that we could argue is actually a party game yeah. and probably fits the closest, closest with the word party is, is leg, this one is yeah. Lego so I You're think right. the first point goes to Darren Ooh. yeah on most accurate who'd have thunk who'd have thunk who'd have thunk I, I mean <laughs> I think I had a bit more of a fight if I actually had a party in my game yeah but sell RV you live yeah. you learn you move on I'm happy to come a little second place on that one cool um, I'm happy should we look yeah <laughs> <laughs> should we have a little look at value for money as our yeah. next yeah. category so um, should we go by how much we spent on each one? I mean, if you're watching this, you can actually see how much I spent on Heavy Rain. Yes. A nice one pound fifty. 50. Um, it's not much. On Heavy cheapest Rain. game we've bought. I think it is the yeah. cheapest game. Um, the joys of going to CX and it being in stock. Yep. Um, how much did you spend, Darren? I spent seven pound forty nine. Mm-hmm. Nice. Seven pound forty nine on uh, Lego. Yeah. And how much did you spend on Resi Seven? It's like eight pounds fifty three. <laughs> Yes, Good it number. is £8.53. I'm just going to pretend I'm not... Yeah, it's £8.53. Yeah. Definitely £8.53. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like should, should we have a little look? Um, so, obviously, m- the cheapest game by far is Heavy, is heavy Rain. Yeah. But should we have a little look at how long it takes to beat these games? Yeah. yeah. Um, we'll start with Resi 7, as I actually happen to have that up at the moment. Cool. The main story, about a nine and a half hour story. Yeah. Um, the main story for all of them, so the main story for Lego is is 10 hours, and Heavy heavy Rain is 10 hours as yeah. well. So very similar length games. Uh, completionist, again, I think quite similar. Um, 24 and a half hours to get the platinum, they say, for Resi 7. Mm-hmm. Um, for Heavy Rain, it's a little shorter at 21 and a half hours, because yeah. it is multiple playthroughs. And Lego Lord of the Rings is 33 and a half hours. So it is mm-hmm. the most to do it. Yeah. Um, but then we ask, argue... Do we want to do it multiple times? Do we want to do stuff like that? Um, the Resi, so Resi 7, we have all gone and got the platinum on it. Yeah. I think it, 
has the re- replayability of getting the trophies and yeah. the enjoyment. I, I don't think I'd play it multiple, multiple times because mm-hmm. you're not. Get, I do it twice to get the two different endings, which then get disappointed because they're basically the same ending, um, but not in a bad way. It's still a great story to play, and I would do the speed run. Like I would go for the platinum in this yeah. game. I don't think I wouldn't go for the platinum when yeah. I played it. Um, it's just one of those games that you go, yeah, I'll get that done. Um, I, I. I, don't, I I looked up a trophy guide how to get the platinum for Resident Evil. Yeah. And I think I played it multiple times and the order it suggested is fun just because it gives you fun stuff when you do each yeah. Yeah. playthrough. So it's like, oh, do the hard playthrough and then you get the saw to do yeah. the yeah. quick playthrough and then you get X to do Y. Yeah. And that's quite nice about it is that on each completion it goes, okay, have a new like toy to play with. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I think front. I think that's the bit. I, I like the fact that when you do this on Madhouse difficulty, it's all... It's like different. The collectibles are slightly different mm. and stuff like that. Yeah. I, and the spawns of the locations of the creatures yeah. are slightly different. So mm. it gives you a different... Um, feel i mean yeah. the story's the same uh, i, I will say i i preferred that to like i went and got the platinum on resi 8 um yeah. this year and i was really actually quite disappointed that they didn't do the same thing because right. by the time i came to do the madhouse run on resi 7 and you know this is the thing for me for value for money i'm gonna vote for that one only because it is my favorite game and i think yeah. regardless of how many times i played it through i actually do play this game through from start to finish probably like twice a year just because yeah but you fun. only played this one game because there's something wrong with you <laughs> <laughs> but like for me for me it's fun for me it was fun and but what i found really disappointing is when you do the village of shadows thing uh run through on eight is that they haven't done the same thing with with the madhouse run things are different spawns are different jack never fucks off um and it it adds another level of like being terrifying whereas villager shadows it was just like oh these these are a bit harder to kill yeah. and it was like and all of your bosses are now absolute bullet sponges which didn't make it scarier it just made it fr- more frustrating which i which i get with this um i was gonna say with lego actually i'll, I'll move on to heavy rain i suppose mm-hmm. if that makes sense because it's i think the fact you to get different endings and there are different outcomes there are multiple playthroughs you can do for it it's whether you want to do the yeah. multiple runs i i personally enjoyed it these games i i play them several times to go through, i but. liked it Yep. I would probably rather just go and look up the endings rather than play it again. Fair enough. But that is purely on the virtue that I played it once and got the good endings. Yeah. Mm. And I don't want to have then have to go back through it and deliberately make eat bad choices. At specific yeah. story points yeah. to get the bad endings. Yeah. And like it is one of those things. I I had a good time with it. I'll get more into that in the next section, the time I had with it. I would rather just go and look it up. Yeah. It's the same as like if you did a choose your own adventure book. Would you then go from the beginning and go like, oh, I'm going to pick option B this time, or yeah. would you just like flick to the last page and go, how else? Could yeah, this I can, I, I can get that, but it's the same way that I play Until Dawn or I play a quarry. I want to play it through multiple times to see what happens. That it's for different people. Different people yeah. enjoy doing that, and other yeah. people will get that one run and go, oh, this is what could have happened. This is what is what could have happened. I think this like the kind of downfall in it in that way is that it has an explicit plot. Yeah. Until Dawn, the entire plot is there is something in the woods killing these people and therefore your entire focus on is can I keep all these people alive? Yeah. yeah. In this, there is an explicit like story and a plot and a mystery. Mm. But everyone can die in it. Everyone can die. <laughs> I give everyone alive. Not everyone. I did not. Manage. Not not everyone alive. No. One particular person died <laughs> and I didn't know I could save him. Um, but... Yeah, the fact that has this plot line and I completed the plot line in the most satisfactory way the game pre- presents it to you means I'm then less inclined to go back and do it other ways. Mm. Like there are certain places, um, like a key part of it is East has to go through these trials. Yeah. And you can back out of a lot of the trials. I did not do that. No, I didn't. Yeah. The only one I'm kind of interested to see is if you do most of the trials, but not all of them, yeah. you have like an additional scene. Mm. There's like four or five scenes but that I, I think, missed throughout the game. I think that's pretty, and that's what I like with it, is that there is the chance to play through, see bits you wouldn't do, whilst wait, with this, with uh, Resi 7, it you're getting the same story regardless yeah, each time. Yeah. Um, the only one that's quite different to that is the Lego game. Yes. Where you're getting the sound story, and it's, obviously it's 10 hours to beat, and then 33 hours, and it's... It's got the. I think it's got the curse of the Lego game, where it's like, can I be bothered to go collect all these million uh, this bricks? Was, this was what <laughs> my point was going to be: is that if I play a Lego game, I'm 
playing a Lego game because I want to see Lego's take on it. I want to see like the little funny bits that they put in. I want to see like the spoofed storylines. I want to put the stupid shit in. Do you know what I mean? But once I've got that, I don't personally know in the type of player that I am and I, I don't have as many Platinums mm. or, you know, and I, I, but I do go into a bit of a completionist thing with a game that I really like and I do really like this. However, I think that's the thing with a Lego game. It's like, what am I completing outside of? Like, what else is it going to give me other than this is really funny and you have to collect some cogs? You know, I just feel like if there was more there, I would want to do it. And I think Lego games are fun, but it's again... They are fun, yeah. I think... (laughs) The real issue with Lego games is that you try and play it with two people and you never then get back together with a second person to finish yeah. the game. And that's not to not to have a problem with that. It's just other people's I like time. it because it's a different interpretation of completing it. With yeah. these yeah. two, they're like going through on a different sense. You're going through it in the same heavy rain to see the different endings or the different yeah. outcomes. Mm-hmm. In a Lego game, you're just making all the numbers big. And I like yes. that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I, w- I will say it's one of those ones as well in a similar vein to like everything kind of being chill is that if you, if you really wanted to play something but didn't want to play anything Thing that was like I can imagine going back and being like hey I'll just go back and collect yeah, these yeah. cogs you know well, this is what's made me more willing to do Lego games in the past and it was a problem I had with the new Star Wars one the thing I like about was. completing a Lego game is that it is nicely carved up into segments yeah. to mm. complete in the terms of like a Heavy Rain or Resident Evil you have to play the entire thing oh, from start to finish to get the new outcome or the new thing definitely. I can jump into a Lego game play a level or two, complete those, and go, cool, yeah. move on to the next I level agree or two, with move that. on to the next mm. level or two. However, I will not say it serves value for money. No. No. Yeah. I don't think that. In my mind, in my heart of heart, I want to go with Heavy Rain, um, purely because of obviously the price point, because it is less than 25%, it's like 25% of that game, if not, it's about 20% of the cost of that game, and you get the same amount of play time, in my opinion. I know you argue that you get more out of that one i would actually argue for heavy rain probably just because i think it has the most to see okay yeah. resident evil has different interpretations of how you can play it and different ways to play it but that playthrough is the playthrough mm. the story yeah. is the story yeah and other than choosing bitch a or bitch b <laughs> <laughs> the story is the yeah. story i love the fact you're saying that when you talk about how poor this uh, res- <laughs> yeah, heavy yeah. rain represents women and you're calling them bitch, bitch, bitch a, a, a and b. i mean to be fair though the- mainly because i don't remember so yeah. Yeah. They are. Zoe, that's the name i mean so so he only ever tries to help but oh, she's she's horrible when you choose your wife surprisingly over this random woman you've yeah, never met once yeah. how dare I don't you really choose- know what she expected oh, you chose my sister and you love her more than me yeah she's my wife yep. what, yeah. what did you expect <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's that and then like Lord of the Rings is Lord of the Rings yeah we'll play the levels again but it's still the Lord yeah. of the Rings I mean the thing is for me I'm obviously I'm going to choose Rezzy just yeah. because I, personally and it's a hard one for me because obviously it doesn't count but the the amount of content that you get from like DLCs on there is insane Um, it's definitely the best Resident Evil game for, in terms of DLC 100% Um. And as I said, I I have gotten so much value out of money out of this game just because I have played it so often. And but you know, I know I'm an anomaly for that. So like, yeah. to be fair, I would be gunning for Lego Lord of the Rings mm. if this wasn't one pound fifty. Yeah. yeah, and that is literally the only reason it's got. If in this there. was like a fiver, yeah, I think it'd be a much closer discussion. Yeah, oh, this is literally definitely a pound. It's a yeah. pound, and you've got at least ten hours of content fair, out of it. It does have the Kingdom Come problem yeah. that it is a ten hours only because it is woefully slow. Yes, mm. it's like five hours of story stretched into a ten-hour game. Yeah, because yeah. it lasts. Fuck, I, you could have told me I played this for twenty-five hours. And I'd be like, yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, <laughs> such a fucking drag. I mean, to be but, fair, there are elements yeah. of Resi with that as well. Though I will always say whenever I play through this game the bit that fucking drags for me every time is the boat bit yeah every time there is yeah. no need for it to be that long there is no need for it to be like why do i play that twice like it's just you're right you wait to talk about entertainment uh-huh. <laughs> i'm kidding I'm... <laughs> so the point um is going to heavy rain. heavy rain heavy rain then so it's a point for me and a point for darren good starting right now it could be anyone's it's still i'm game. disappointed <laughs> <laughs> most entertaining is next most entertaining um, and that is one that you get the most entertaining it could be like you know it is fun or it could be that it's the story or you just the general enjoyment the fear the horror everything it, it's what is entertaining I mean it's the same like movies are different I like so. that you made it explicitly clear it can be the story separate from the gameplay yes <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd better make that abundantly clear yep so 
Entertainment. Um, should we move to the one that we think is the most party, the one that's most potentially fun? Yes. Is um, it entertaining? <laughs> it is. It is entertaining. It's thoroughly confusing at times, um, which is when we talk about story being separate to gameplay. I will be perfectly honest. The gameplay on this is dog shit. Um, <laughs> PS3 game. It is. It, yeah, exactly. It's funny the other PS3 game is going to say exactly the same it, thing. It is. It's yeah. The most. It, it pops you in at the beginning in the big fucking battle and just explodes that you know exactly what you're going to do. So you are like switching between two characters. You're beating people up that are on your team because it's not explicitly clear who you're fighting and who you're not. The orcs. Um, it's the orcs, the, yeah. the Lego, Josh, <laughs> in a dark battlefield. They all look the fucking same. Do you remember when we said they weren't going to be shouting in this episode? This is how friendly fire happens. Oh, God, honestly, now. But it is... Those people, those people, bang, bang. I will say, the fact that the gameplay is shocking and I will go into this in my play of the game, actually does help with the entertainment because it is so funny. And as I said, the th- good thing with Lego games is that they just intersperse the story with all these like stupid, fun, humorous yeah. things. So you go through it and you think, like, I'm not going to lie, when I got it, I was like, oh, I fucking know what happens in Lord of the Rings. I've watched the extended versions like 40 million times. I fucking know. And then they put these little bits and you think oh yeah no actually that's really good that's i honestly funny. think the worst thing to ever happen to lego games is the introduction of voices you think so yeah yeah i think lego games were so much better when they didn't have voice acting and so the whole thing had been represented in really dumb like charades mm. yes i added mean... so much to the entertainment whereas now like, especially the new star wars one there's background gags but yeah. it's yeah. just the story yeah a lot of its charm I, is gone I, I get part of that I mean I still think the new ones still have that joke and I think they even make more they got more jokes that are relevant to people as well yeah, the yeah. fans of it mm. whilst the physical jokes are brilliant in the old Lego I, I'll say this this has a real good mix of physical and just outright stupid vocal lines as is well it, is this so, voice acted this one this one is voice cool. acted minimally I will say um, except for the bits which are literally like um, cut scenes that mm. are narrated. Right. Um, the actual in-story stuff is minimally voice acted. It's a lot of physical humour. It's it's just stupid. And it's entertaining <laughs> because it's stupid. It's so... It, yeah. it, well, it's fun to play. And I was taken... Not taken by surprise because I knew it was going to be fun because it's a Lego game. But considering when I got it, I was like, oh, fuck me. Um, I, I you, you came in when I was yeah. playing it and you were like, you still playing this? I was like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> they games sort of suck you in. Yeah, they do. They're, but... they're simple. They are. They they prey on you knowing the story. I mean, if you go into these, I think not knowing them, you're not going to enjoy them as much. Yeah. I think if you go and like play, I mean, I was going to say the Jurassic World one, which is probably a poor choice because it's not a great game in general. But I enjoyed it. I just don't fine. think I, don't, I think it's fine but like if you've got ones which are Lego which are like the, the the Lord of the Rings where you have that sort of love with that the Star Wars where you have the love you know like yeah, things yeah. you've got that you're gonna enjoy them more and yeah. I think it really preys on the simplest like bit which is good yeah um, so much fun Heavy Rain was it fun? <laughs> was it entertaining? I don't know honestly um, I really struggled with this one for a while mm-hmm. um, I will say I ended up getting engaged in the story. Yeah. The problem was I got engaged in the story. There are 52 chapters in this game. Chapter 42 is what grabbed me. <laughs> I, a lot of this I played just because I wanted to get through the story. Yeah. I you, wanted to. It's hard to give, I think, this game any sort of response without knowing how it all works yeah. and wraps out. And yeah. like, the problem with it is, is um, there's a, a whole thing about uh, games which are clearly, they just wanted to make a movie and they didn't, so they made a game. Yeah, and a lot of the later ones of these do fall into that as well. I think so. This yeah. feels especially like that because there's a lot of what I would call busy work, right? Yeah, where, like you are the FBI agent, so you have to go investigate a crime scene, but it's so fucking slow. It doesn't change in you the newer just games. Plod around. You yeah. look at a piece of evidence, and he goes, oh, "That's not relevant." It gave me real LA noir vibes. It's where you pick up something, and he goes, "Well, that's not fucking important," and then puts it down. <laughs> it's it's so much. I mean, I think it even gets potentially worse in Detroit Become Human because like you've got you've got all this wonderful scope that you could do. Then they're still like, well, oh, turn on my glasses now. I'll walk around and look at this area, like mm. Mr. Robot. You're like, oh, come on. It's they got so much. They have so much, but they do know how to waste time. Yeah, there's just a lot of it. There's one in particular. Um, I want to complain about this scene immediately after I played it. Yeah, there's one where you as Norman Jaden, my least favourite character, because he has the emotional range of... A teaspoon. Yep. He's yep. nothing. 
um, he has a drug problem. Who fucking cares? Um, he they go to investigate a, a potential suspect for the origami killer, and you go into his apartment, and he is a religious nut. He has crucifixes all over the wall. I like this scene in my, in, in memory. I like this scene because um, it feels very much like a bunch of films that I've watched. You know, yeah, he has crucifixes all over the wall, and you can wander around and look at his stuff. Clearly, this is time gated. So after a certain amount of time, the guy comes home. I looked at all the evidence. I got two minutes before that, so I was literally just stood there going, "Do I break the game? Do I leave?" <laughs> <laughs> and then the guy comes in. They have a confrontation. Um, he pulls out a gun. You talk him down in the funniest fucking way. Sometimes you talk him down. <laughs> Sometimes you. I actually I looked this up, and he doesn't. He never no. shoots. No, no, but you can fail and talk you him can down. Fail other ones, yeah. Um, and he then puts the gun down, you arrest him, you take him away, never comes up again. No. That guy's never mentioned, the event is never mentioned. I think the only reason that scene is there is to inform you that the lieutenant you're with is an asshole, but yeah. you know he's an asshole because you've interacted with him three times before when he's an asshole. That entire scene, worthless. It really does make it's it's almost like they try to make a living game. So like everything you just experience the day that they're having. Yeah. Like you're gonna experience every part of their day whether you want to or not. Yeah. I get it. I understand it, but I agree with you. It feels like it's a TV show where they've gone, God, we've got to make this 12 episodes. Really, it's an eight-episode thing. This seems like the more. inner workings of James Joyce when he wrote Ulysses. Mm, no, because I like Ulysses. The thing with it is, it's clearly intended <laughs> to like root you in the characters and yeah. root you in the events. And half the time, that's really good. When you're doing Ethan's trials, mm. that is great. There's a trial where you have to drive the wrong way down like the freeway. Yeah. Yeah. And that is insane because you have to do... like It's all like motion control quick time events yeah so you have to like steer the wheel around cars as you're going yeah and to be fair that is very unresponsive so yes, I hit like is. three things because you go done and the game goes no nope. we haven't quite worked this out on PS3 or yeah. it. The, um, but I, then like the other times you're Madison you walk around her apartment you have a shower you nearly get killed and it's a dream yeah, and that's never brought up again. That's never important. Yeah, it's never relevant. I think Fair. the okay. issue with this, with with Heavy Rain, compared to what Lord, Lego Lord of the Rings, is the fact that we all know Lord of the Rings. I really like Heavy Rain because there are so many nods and homages to a million different like crime and films and stuff like that. Which, if you're not someone who watches a million films like I do, you're gonna miss stuff that you're gonna go, oh, this is just yeah. a standard. Yeah. Yeah. It's I, not trying to nod to anything. I you know? just I feel like I would have had a better time. If it was shorter. Watching half of it and playing half of it. And it right. would have cut out some of like the superfluous bollocks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like some okay. of, a lot of the good stuff, which I didn't think so early on, is the um, Scott Shelby stuff. Yeah. Because you sort of... He is unfolding it. Can I spoil an 11-year-old game? Yeah. 12-year-old game? And by unfolding it, do you mean the origami itself? Yeah, Scott Shelby's the origami killer. One <laughs> of your players is the killer himself. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of his gameplay, because his entire point is he's pretending to be hired so he can yeah. destroy the evidence. Okay. So it's, you which sort is cool. of yeah. you work out the case with him, but the entire reason you're working out the case with him... Is so other people don't work out you. Exactly. Okay. Because yeah. he is finding the evidence. So which he's following that's, that's cool. the trail like of evidence. That. Yeah. And when that reveal comes up, you're like, right. That's why we followed this route, because you know that's a way you could be found out. Yeah. So you're destroying that evidence. I get you. Okay. But before that, you have a lot of points where it just feels a bit worthless. Right. Like you go into a convenience store, you either save the guy you don't because he's getting robbed, you get a bit of evidence and you leave. Mm. And at the time, that feels like a sort of wasted moment of time. Yeah. Or there's various little bits like that where it's clearly just trying to like buffer up the story. Yeah. Uh, but, and as you said beforehand, it's almost like to make him look really good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you're trying to it's just doing a lot of stuff, which again is more acceptable in TV and film. Yeah. Because you're establishing a lot of things. Right. But one of the things afforded by the medium of the game is, is you don't already... need a lot of that because you are playing as them. Yeah. And you sort of impart a lot of that yourself. Right. So you have a lot of time, which is cool to watch. As I said, I think I would have preferred to watch this. I think it's... It, it, what it does, it stumbles over the hurdle it's created for itself, which is making a new sort of medium yeah. of game, essentially. Watching yeah. it would have been cool. And there are mm. bits which are better to play than to watch. Yeah. But yeah, just a lot of it is... It, I was entertained by the story once it started to pick up, but a lot of it is dragged down by taking a bit too long to get going. Yeah. Right. And no one has any personalities. So you God. Love them. Wait until I talk about this Resi 7 yep. bollocks. God, I can't see how anyone likes this game. Uh, <laughs> no. I much preferred to say. Now, uh, no one did. No one did. Uh, that is the most offensive thing 
ever. Do you know what's no, more offensive? Not. I haven't played six. No, I don't no. know. Oh, I wouldn't. So, uh, Resi 7, um, as Karen said, it's her favourite time, uh, favorite game of all time, which must mean it's a pretty pretty solid game. It must be entertaining itself to make you want to play it that many times. Yeah. I was happy to play it four or five times. You were happy to play it four or five times or however many times to get the Platinum. I think the initial run of it is a really nice, good story. You feel helpless at points. There is, I don't think at any point do you feel overpowered, which is always a concern with these games. They've balanced it quite nicely. Mm-hmm. I mean... By the last sort of run, I had so much ammo, it didn't really... Like, you know, yeah. I'm just blasting through you guys. I'm not having any concern and worry about it. But in the first run, when you're trying it out for the first time, going through all the elements, it's so... It is really captivating, I think, the story. And the characters are all realised, and I know you're scared of Jack, Karis. You I think he's him. horrible. Me and Darren very much hate Marguerite. Yep. Um, I mean, there are characters that will genuinely pluck at that sort of phobia that you didn't realize you had to mm. make you feel uncomfortable and it does it in such a good way it makes you feel like you are in a horror movie essentially mm. they've done a really good job of that and there are moments where you think oh there's a bit of hope then they pull it away like the cop shows up and then he's dead and you're like oh no what do i do now and you you go oh i've worked out what's going on here no i haven't worked out what's going on here oh this is gonna no that's not quite what i thought was happening and it it, it works and balances itself really nicely i think it's one of the best survival horror games that has come out in many, many years. I'm trying to think of a better survival horror game than it, and there's very few up mm. there, but it is in the top tier yeah. of it. It does what it wants very, very well, and I think that's you know a massive testament to this game. Yeah. I think the story is strong. I think the gameplay handles really nicely in it, which mm. you're never sure of in a Resi game. Uh, the graphics could be a little better, yeah. but that's because it's Capcom graphics at this point, which is a bit ropey, mm. um, which obviously have got better. I think eight's a nice technical yeah. upgrade. But you know what? For the time it came out, it looks really nice as well. And the soundscape and the voice acting is all right. The teeth are horrifying in themselves. <laughs> um, the vacant eyes that some of them have, also terrifying. But the different sort of levels of gameplay, getting to do the VHS is to see elements to help you work out where you're going forwards really well done you know and then you go to another area you go oh this is cool i can work that the puzzles are simple enough that you can get through without having to worry about what you need to do next yeah, you yeah. finally go oh this is clearly what i need i've seen one of these where do i go now like in the beginning in the first room where you have to find the dog heads you're like mm. none of this has gone oh god how do i solve this you find another bit and go oh i've seen something like this i think the only puzzle that is not super clear for me, was, again, in the first section where you go into where the bodies are and you have to open, like, two of the, yeah, two yeah. Of the things. Yeah. I think I got it the wrong way around, like, constantly. I was like, I'm doing it right. I was like, oh, no, I need to do it the opposite way around because mm. it wasn't as intuitive as I wanted it to be. Yeah. But that's just a minor thing, and that's just me not yeah. solving the puzzle as quickly. However, I think everything else in it feels really good. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I don't know. Like, my, my only... Complain about Resi 7. I'm going to let a complaint go in before. I, I was going to do a complaint as well. Oh, so. I, do, I do love it. I think it's a great game. I think it suffers from its own quality. And then mm. the game peaks about 45 mm. minutes in. Yes. And then this it's was never that good again. As well. It's this almost like a downward mine. vertical in quality from yeah. there. Yeah. It, it just slowly gets from... worse and worse. Yeah. Not bad. Mm. Never bad. It I... reaches like mediocre. Yeah. Yeah. But... Yeah. And I, that was going to be mine as well, is that, like, I think it suffers from what a lot of Resi games suffer from. And horror. In the, and horror yeah. in general, yeah, for sure. Is that the first, I would say the first two sections, Jack and yeah. Marguerite sections, are superb. They are so good atmospherically, yeah. story-wise. They, they're claustrophobic. They're disgusting. They're genuinely scary. And then we get Lucas. When you leave the old house and especially when you leave the estate altogether it becomes not as scary i won't say not scary there are you know i know i've complained about the boat scene there's definitely parts of the boat it's scene that shit me up yeah um it but it's 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 not as as good it, it hits a kind of peak as you said 45 minutes in Probably it's more, in it's more than that. Level. I would say Marguerite's the bit that I I I still think the Jack bit's better than the Marguerite bit. Yeah, I, I, do I think as Marguerite's well. scarier. I think yeah. the Jack bit is a higher quality. Yeah, but like lead up to the Jack fight. Mm-hmm. I think it's, it's so the best good. Bit of it's that so game. good. Yeah, and then it just sort of steps downwards from there. Yes, it becomes. 
as, as more of the truth unfolds in it, I think it becomes a little bit less scary, especially as you get, it's little things like you get better guns, you get more yeah. stuff as well. And I think, you know, yeah. Yeah, I think after Lucas, it changes genre. That's that's yeah. the truth. It's, it's no longer survival horror at that point. Like I said, towards the end of the game, you are a bit more run gun. So like, well, I it, should be all right, you know. I, it steps from being alien to aliens. Yeah, yeah. Very quickly. It has the opposite problem to Heavy Rain, where yeah. the last two hours of Heavy Rain is fucking class. Yeah. Yeah, I was leading up to that. It's a real slog. <laughs> and this is the other... Yeah, it is the other way around. Not to that same degree. Yeah. Not yeah. by a long way. This builds up to its ending, but if you don't know what ending is coming, it feels all very... Yeah. Yeah. disjointed and kind of pointless I, as, as I, I said I've replayed this so many times and every time I've played it that bit where you get onto the boat every time I'm like oh fuck me see, I have it's to do weird. this again I don't mind the boat as much I think the Lucas section which we're talking about with the, with, with the puzzle and the birthday mm. party I genuinely think it's a complete chore of a section yeah. I just don't care for it I don't think it's particularly scary I don't think it's interesting I'm just like cool, let's just knock this out as quickly as I can. Yeah. I don't mind going through the element and then I had to fight that thing by the lift. I thought, oh, that's fun. But the yeah. actual birthday cake I, I itself, tell you what you it know. is as well, though, is I think that it's a lack of a connection with the character for me. Yeah. The, the, the bakers themselves, especially like, and this is a spoiler and it isn't a spoiler, as we all know they're infected, right? That's all right, I fucking so, spoiled this. You go yeah. ahead. <laughs> we all know the family is infected. Don't spoil but of the Rings, though. You, no, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you all know that, like, Jack and Marguerite particularly were just regular fucking people before yeah. they got in, infected and they, and they weren't anything like this. With Lucas, you get this impression from like diary entries He's and always different been things. A He's always just been this fucking weird kid who liked doing weird sadistic shit. And to me, that actually isn't as scary. It's just no. like, oh, okay, this is this annoying cunt who like wants to fucking do bad things. Oh, scary. It, Instead of it being these regular people who've been completely turned by this thing. It's weird. It's almost gone because they, they've they've hit different levels of horror here. Like the first one is that typical hillbilly, you're not safe sort of thing. Because although he does sort of mutate and stuff, you're not really like, it, it, that's yeah. not the big thing. The second one is almost creature feature with Marguerite, which mm-hmm. is scary in itself. Then you get almost that new sort of saw esque thing, or the or something you know, which is more working behind the scenes. And you're like, this isn't scary, and this is this has lost it for me. Yeah. Then you go to the boat, which I do think is again that sort of typical ghost ship, and that's more yeah. the ghost area spectral. Yeah. And it's like, oh cool, we've got the different areas of horror, but as always, the Lucas bit, hmm. the sort of I'm I'm the person who's orchestrated all this. You'll never escape. I don't really care yeah. for it, but it's it's probably appeals to certain people because it is. Yeah, all those horror genres. But it's, yeah. it's good in that, all I will say is that when you say that, like seven and eight both follow that kind of going through different horror tropes because yeah. when you then look at eight, they follow that again because With, they yeah. go through the vampire trope, they go mm, through the, the werewolves, the, yeah. the werewolves, they go through the Frankenstein model, yeah. they go through, you know, so they, they, they started that with this though. And I think this is, as you said, a I, really good look through different horror genres, different lenses. Regardless of it dropping off, I still do think I, it's the I best and most entertaining, it's yeah. the most entertaining game of the three yeah. um, by a long way so I think the best points go to Resi 7 I, cool. I would give mine to one that piece. too so. cool one apiece which all comes down to player of the game which <laughs> is not how you want to end this at all nope. um, should we go over to Darren first sure or does, Darren, do does Darren feel like he's got this happy to do mine <laughs> I, I don't think it's great but it's I'm, I'm happy to do it um, so my honourable mention player of the game is uh, in a chase scene where Norman throws a chicken it's very fun <laughs> A chicken flies into his face. He grabs it with both hands and goes, fuck it. And it's really funny. Um, my actual one, I think a lot of the time, this game tries to build tension and really does not do a good job of it. Yeah. Because it's very sort of ham-fisted. The only time I felt tension during one of Ethan's trials is because I fucked it up <laughs> and then I had to be really careful afterwards. Yeah. Which was the uh, the pylon one, where you have to go through oh, like, the pylon maze. I hate that. And I, I hate fucked that up the first two, and you can only get hit three times, times before yeah. you die. Right. So I sort of sat with sweaty palms, like press the buttons. <laughs> I think it's. I think you're. It's one of those ones. If you're too good at the game, you don't get the proper tension. It's... Yeah. But uh, the the play of the game for me, I don't know if they were intending to build tension here, but sort of a instinct of what was going to happen made this really tense okay um so as ethan you're at the park with your son sean um and what you've done up to this point is you have had 
Uh, Ethan has had one of his kids die. He's very sad. He reads a newspaper article about the origami killer strike. You then go to Scott Shelby, who is looking into the origami killer, who kidnaps young boys and kills them. You then go to Norma Jaden, who's investigating a crime scene of mm. the origami killer, who's killed a young boy. Conveniently, Ethan sure has one of them young boys as a son. So yeah. like, well, someone's getting kidnapped, isn't he? Mm. Yeah. That's very clearly where this is going. So you're in the park, and you're like, this has got to be it, right? This has <laughs> got to be it. And like, you're sat there with your son, and he's he's an asshole. Because he's a little yeah. kid whose brother's dead, and he just yeah. seems sad all the time, thinks you're an asshole. And you're sort of trying to engage with him. You're like, come on, let's go play and stuff. Let's go do this and that. And every time the camera cuts away from the sun to Ethan, you're like, <laughs> is the kid is <laughs> gone? <laughs> and it cuts back, you're like, oh, it's fine. And then fucking the kid has bought a um, a boomerang from school, and there's a whole thing about he doesn't know how to use it. So you have Ethan who gets it, and he knows how to do it. So he throws it into the distance, and he's watching it, and the camera is panning this boomerang. <laughs> Ethan. Ethan, your son's going to get stolen. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it comes back and Sean's still there. Like, oh, <laughs> okay. And then you go around, it's like, um, you go around like the merry-go-round and you're pushing it and he's sat on it and it just like pans it on Ethan's face. Oh he's my it, God. Like, he's gone. He's gone. No, he's fine. <laughs> and then you go to like buy him a yeah. bag of sweets and you turn away to buy the sweets from the man. You're like, he's gone. He's fucking gone. <laughs> it's like, he's fine. <laughs> and then you eventually yeah. have, he gets like, he gets on the, um, the, a carousel yeah and you do that and then like a bit of story happens he is gone then he yeah. has been taken he is gone but it's just this moment Build of up. it kept fucking yeah. cutting away from him just oh after you've gone through the line of ethan's clearly very attached to his son there is a serial killer out here who is kidnapping children and this is about the time he normally mm, does it. it yeah so every time it cuts away from him, you're like yeah. Yeah. Ethan, ethan watch your especially because the way that jason dies it's is that Ethan repeated. takes his eyes off him. Yeah. So every time Ethan takes his eyes off of Sean, you're like, Ethan, watch your fucking son. <laughs> and he's still there. Do your job. Be a father. To be fair, I wasn't watching him very well because there's a bit after that where you have to tell the police what time he was taken and what he was wearing. And I got them all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no fucking You were idea. spending too much time looking at Ethan doing, do your job rather than yeah. you remember it's you the, are yeah. Ethan. The boomerang was the worst one because he throws it and the camera pans Ethan watching it go through the sky. Where you've just left Sean on a bench to your side. And I'm like, he's gone. Ooh. He's fucking gone. <laughs> oh, Because God. the whole thing is that he takes them in broad daylight. This yeah. is broad daylight. Ethan is not watching his son. Yeah. But like, Ethan. It's... And then when he does go, you're like, oh, God. Ethan. Then, yeah. <laughs> Ethan. <laughs> Ethan. Ethan. <laughs> There's a great bit after that where you go around yelling, Sean. Yes. And I press the button at the wrong time. So the cutscene, like, pans and pick up his bag. But his mouth is agape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, Sean, Sean! <laughs> there, is, there are bits in that game that are just stupid. I mean, the Jason one is the typical one that everyone yeah, thing Because you, you get to choose him shouting Jason as you walk around, so you just hammer it. And they try to give him different inflections, but if you do it quick enough, it is just, Jason, 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 Jason. Um, which is brilliant. Um, play of the game. Um, I'd like to go last, if possible. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, um, Resi 7. Um, I have played this game several times, so I was trying to work out where it is. There are moments where, I think we've already talked about it, where I played it for the first time. I was in the Jack bit <laughs> in the middle of the night. It was around Halloween. Um, I was running around, and then a drum circle started outside the house, because I was at Karis' parents, so her witches were there. Like, dum, 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 I was like, ah, ah. It just increased the tension. <laughs> Do as you want to tell them what you actually Nicely did? Built the oh, I, I literally ran around singing Nope to the tune of Mario to get away from Jack, which I think was right. I like it. Nope, 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 no, 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 Mm-hmm. That's good, and just yeah. hold on to your hands. You're like, cool. Yeah, I save that. Um, there's loads of great points in this, and like being fed the food and the whole argument between them. The bath situation where Jack pops up again fucks me up. But the moment that makes me genuinely feel most terrified is with Marguerite. Is it when she jumps through the wall? It's where she jumps through the <laughs> fucking window. You go. I feel fine. Oh, I have to go up the stairs. It doesn't matter how slowly you go up those stairs. Yeah. I try and go as quietly as I can. It doesn't matter. And she blasts through this window. You cannot avoid getting hit by her and yeah. shoot her. 
but fuck me, every time. The first time it did, I think I literally dropped the controller. I think you, you paused the game. I, you were I like, did. Oh. I pressed pause and walked away. It, yeah. <laughs> and it just genuinely terrifies me that much that moment. I think after playing about four times, I was, I was used to it. But she is just a horrific thing to fight. It's this old woman that's turned into a spider who shows her maggoty undercarriage. Um, that yeah, you have maggot to fanny. Shoot, her maggot fanny that you have to shoot several times. <laughs> yeah. It's just horrific and the problem was it was the um, at the end it was the one trophy I hadn't got was shooting her while she jumps at you so I had to keep playing this it was almost like the game was deliberately torturing yeah. me I was yeah, like yeah that trophy I understand how I feel as Ethan now I she, get it she is worse for it because Jack at least still looks sort of human she yeah. looks so distorted Dorted. it's like it ugh. is gross and like, she is terrible I, th- I think this is the first game where I, I've had a moment that I would have put forward to play the game a lot of them I think about it and I'm like I don't know what I'd say. I don't yeah. know what I'd do. This one, I, I know. What, Resi 7? For Resi 7. Yeah, what, what, what was your... And it's in relation to something we talked about earlier, that they've, like, they're people and they've been infected. And it's when you talk to the human versions of them. Oh, oh yeah. You get, like, locked in, you just talk to the human Jack, and he's like... Just Same yeah. family. Yeah. It's, like, oh. and it's, like, it's this moment where it's getting like intense and intense and horror and horror, it's and you just have this moment yeah. of brevity where he's just like, and the I'm the human, I'm really so nice. Gentle, and he's so gentle, and he's so like, I'm really sorry, like, I didn't this mean is to bad. Do I think, but I mean, that speaks volumes to this game that everyone who plays will have. have a I, I also have one, and Josh is uh, privy to it, because I think my play of the game for Rise of 7 happens every time, in that it's is the it bit where Jack in the you're running from Jack in the corridor, and, he blasts and the I wall. panic like fuck at every time. Like and he has a bit as well where if you I thought it was really clever at one point right and I was like I know how to do this right so I'll just skip this bit and go straight to and I thought he'll never catch up with me he burst through the side of the yeah. fucking wall and I honestly my soul Screamed. left my body I was I paused yeah. it I put it down and I was like I really thought I'd gotten it's away so with well it so well done so fucking such, bad such a good moment for all of them mm. yeah Okay, go on then, Lego. Okay, so mine's down to um, the shocking gameplay and also just sheer stupidity. But I legitimately laughed about this for about 20 minutes last night. And it's so stupid. Right, so it's the bit where... <laughs> What's it going to be? In the story, and in it, it, you, Sam, Mary and Pippin. And it's the bit where you are hiding underneath the bank and there's the Black Rider yep, and yep. He's, he can feel that the ring is around. And genuinely, for a Lego game, I was like, whoa, this is tense, right? Because there's like... Um, there's a bit of light and you can't walk into the light because if you walk into the light, basically you have to jam circle because he's trying to put the ring on because he's like, I really want to do it. And then Black Red is like this and oh, it's, it's, it's tense, right? Fucking love jewellery. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and um, the... Didn't like uh, that so hand what, gesture. No, I was going to say, this is, yeah, okay. Um, there is also a little Calling raven over there. a horrible right? way to describe it. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a little raven over here as well and... All the way through it, as I said, it doesn't make it massively clear what you have to do. It gives you these little kind of elements of there's a raven over there. There's that, okay, so I clearly have to use the raven to distract him. But it doesn't make it massively clear what you're supposed to do. So for ages, I was looking around every two minutes. I was walking into the fucking light and I'm going to do this thing again. I was like, for fuck's sake, like, what do I have to do? And then you go, and randomly, I thought, right, I'm going to walk back and see what I'm missing. You walk past a rock, right? Now, much like in the films... Sam just fucking sticks to you, right? So they're like, what you can do is you can pick up the rock and throw it, right? So I was like, great, I'm going to throw it at the raven, right? To distract it, which turns out what what you're meant to do, I think. what you've got to do, right? But because it doesn't, it tells you how to throw it, but it doesn't tell you that you you have to swing the camera as well, right? So I swear to God, I'm trying to be really sneaky and trying to make sure that this black rider thing doesn't hit me and I reach the camera and Sam is here and I literally just go boosh and I just <laughs> solidly hit Sam in the face with this massive fucking roll Sam disintegrates <laughs> into a pile of Lego the rock is on the side and I'm laughing because Frodo is just on the camera like <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and again. He, yes. he, he builds himself back up and I managed to do it but it was just I was so tense that I was like right come on I'm going to do it I just fucking just obliterated it's oh. a typical Sam the double like, agent it's like no <laughs> <laughs> it just made me laugh it's not so funny Whitney when you Houston win it Whitney Houston starts playing yeah. <laughs> but honestly I, I <laughs> it was a double hand 
it it's, to the it's face. such a classic Lego mover. <laughs> it? it just everything goes wrong because there's, the there's nothing more Lego than killing your partner character. Yeah, completely unintentionally. Also, to be fair, my other one was going to be when you're in that fucking battle at the beginning, and it's so overwhelming because there's so many people there, and I thought, yeah, I'm doing really well, only to find out that I'd been beating the shit out of Elrond for about five minutes. <laughs> Like uh, three very different plays of the game. Yeah, I, I don't know. The worst, be- the strange thing is that you know, Lego. We all have that moment. We all do. Yeah. Resi, we all have different moments that all stick out to us. Mm. And then, <laughs> then there's but heavy then rain. Was telling that story, I did feel genuinely yeah. tense. Like it's because it's a really, it is a really good game. It's just really good game in moments. Yeah, mm. and it's very clearly that's where the story is going. But because of how slow the game had been up to that point, right, is it now or is it going to be like five chapters? Yeah. Are we just going to happily go home and fucking nothing's going to happen? Which I think would have been even funnier. It would have been. But it's completely (laughs) fine to build up all his tension and went, nah, fuck you. Go on home. (laughs) What um, what do you want to go with then, Karis? um, As funny as mine was, I just think... I would probably vote for yours only because we've all had that experience. Mm. We all all know what that play the game is like. But... I also think mine was fucking hilarious. It is, and it is. It's great. I love a Lego moment like that. I really do. But I also... Yeah. Don't know how you killed Sam so fucking brutally. Oh, I really... <laughs> honestly, now, he fucking set, felt like a sack of shit as well. It was really good. And I, I gotta be honest, I really like the Heavy Rain one because mm-hmm. I have... I remember that yeah. moment as well. But Marguerite... Literally, I got a honest, horrifying I, creature. I, I think I'm pretty good for... Spare, spooky games and stuff mm. like that. I don't tend to like jump that much. I make the loud noise, but I just get on and it's all fine. This game, I, I don't think there's a game that was fucked me up quite like this. Mm. Um, apart, but that might be more entertainment than that moment because there were so many good moments and I don't think it's the moment that resonates. I probably would go for the Heavy Rain one mm. for myself. I, Darren's going for Heavy Rain because then he gets the point. No, <laughs> I'm not, not only for that, but as I said, like for the majority of this game... I didn't really give a shit yeah. about anyone because they all have no personality because it's the PS3. They're all like Uncanny Valley really weird. Yeah, really they really are. There's a sex scene later in the game. It's the most uncomfortable I've ever been <laughs> in because you have to do it. Yeah. But they look weird. Yeah. And they don't look quite human and their kissing doesn't quite work because they're just like models mm. being mashed together. But... I really cared for that fucking kid. I gotta say, I think it's a good play in the game if you can describe it and like that did got that like reaction for build you. the yeah. having not played it myself. So cool. So we'll give it to okay. Heavy Rain. I got a point. Darren wins yeah. the episode. Yeah. The it's most, been so long. But the most shocking <laughs> thing I think I think we're gonna get this when we get the vote. I would be shocked if Resi Seven doesn't end up being the game in the vault. Game. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's the best game. I think the entertainment one. It's best game. Sadly, I think it's Heavy Rain second, then Lego, but that's, yeah, yeah. that's my opinion. I, I think that anyone who's listening who hasn't played Heavy Rain and therefore doesn't have like a centre, play it. It's better when you know where it's going, yeah. I'll say. The problem is it takes so long to get to the point, yeah. but then the point is incredible. Yeah. And I think it's worth playing to get to that. Yeah. You just need to know I going in that it's going to be slow. There are a lot of like mm. crime films like that where it's a real drag to go for the reveal. But and mine's a Lego game. You know you're going to have fun. You know you're yeah. going to have fun. I don't fun. think there was a bad game here. I just think none of them were actually party games. No. <laughs> so I think we all fucked the briefing on this, I'll be honest. Yep, we really did. I don't know. I won most accurate, so I did fine. Yes, yeah, you did. Yeah, Rightfully yeah, yeah. won. But anyway, <laughs> should we now move on to find out what we are playing next oh, time? Oh, I'm so excited about this because you've had this little glint in your I'm eye. I'm really excited for this topic. I know. So, <laughs> one um, of our good dumb ones. Should we go into the random genre generator? The random genre Yay! generator. <laughs> and what are we going to be doing for the next episode? Okay, for episode six, the follow-up to the lovely party uh, episode... I think this is quite funny because last time we had um, games based on movies was episode six. Oh, is this? It's anime, boys and girls. Oh, it's oh anime bullshit. It's anime. Yes. Oh god, anime I bullshit. Yes. As yes. Our generator. I oh my god. I really am not looking forward to this one. Oh, I'm fucking bust, buzzing. Right. <laughs> Oh god! I am excited for this. I've been I waiting for anime wait. bullshit for so Who's, long. I'm it's so broad. It's a shame that you're buying for me then. I know. It? <laughs> oh my it's god! So broad. I'm really excited for this. I genuinely think I might be the last person to purchase for the first time in this. Oh, I won't count on it. I'm still here. Yes, I, you are. I don't know much yeah. about anime games. I've, I've so. got a, I've got a route. 
Yeah. I don't know mm. how well it will land. We'll oh, I'm so excited. But oh, yeah. that's great. Join us next time to see how well, not next time we have another freebies episode, yep. then we'll have that following it. So thank you for joining us for another episode. Um, Darren's got another point, which is nice Ooh. for him. I'm not sure where we all are in standings this, right this now. This is my first point but it's since first episode point. one. <laughs> so I think Keris and Darren are tied on two and I'm on three. I might be wrong. I think so. Who right. knows? Maybe. Might be something like that. Who knows? I think I'm winning, but I don't know if I am. <laughs> um, but thank you for listening to another episode. Um, make sure to check us out on our socials. and Well, basically, our Instagram, which is at discountpod, two Cs, or at discountcaris, discountjosh, discountdarren. Two R's. Um, all with two R's. Thank you, Darren. <laughs> um, yeah, well, don't all with two R's, just Darren with two R's. Yep. So, um, I technically have three Cs. Okay. <laughs> that is true. Not not discount carries, no. no. Discount carries. And that's on um Instagram. Check us out there. Um and we'll we'll we post all our stuff about games. Darren posts his million platinums, Keris posts cosplays and stuff, and yeah. I just am there. And um then we also do check us out. We do stream on Twitch now, so come check us out on Twitch, which is which is again discount pods on Twitch. Um we stream three days a week on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays. Wednesdays are episode games, so we'll we will be streaming these three at some point coming up um, as well as vault games um, and then on Mondays and Fridays we do Legacy Games where Darren is currently doing Kingdom Hearts yep. probably at the point of this he might be on Kingdom Hearts 2 we don't know where he is but I'd, or I'd just after on, one I'd be on Chain of Memories Chain of Memories um, I'm doing Demon Souls and Curse doing Pokemon Violet and that's pretty much it do make sure to share us subscribe like do all those things find us on YouTube as well where this episode hopefully will be at the point this comes out probably not it's probably delayed because I'm doing it Um, (laughs) but we appreciate all your love support um, and we love chatting with you all so do find us on socials and we can have a conversation about whether we were right or wrong yeah Yeah. Um, and I think that's everything cool yeah sounds right yeah I think so nothing else so thank you all thank you for being our player 4 and we will catch you next time bye bye bye